In this next operation, we're going to go ahead and focus on this slot that's going through the middle of the part. In fact, what I'm going to do is select the bottom face, right mouse button click on it, but instead of using end milling or side milling, I'm going to go to others, and here I'm going to choose slot milling. That's right, we have a special command for just doing slotting. Here we need to get a smaller tool, so again, I'm going to go build a new tool, double click, I'm going to say I need a quarter inch slot. Now if you notice, when I build that tool, the software automatically passed the measurement of the width of the slot to us. Awesome. So if this is not a critical slot, I'm going to go size for size. If it is, maybe I would type a smaller diameter cutter. Maybe it's a half inch worth of flute, maybe it's two inches long only, and so on. You get the idea. Go ahead and green check mark. Next what I'm going to do, again, feeds and speeds, always feeds and speeds. Here we got some feeds and speeds in here already, so that's good. Now I'm going to go to my settings. Now in the settings, I'm going to say I'm going to go right to finish because again, I'm going to pretend this is not a critical feature. It's just clearance for something else. So I'm going to go straight to zero on everything. For my depth of cut, I'm going to say it's 30 thousandths. I don't need to use leveling. Instead, all I'm going to do is change how I'm working. In fact, I want to do a zigzag square cycle and you can see the tool path changes as soon as that happens. Now, if the toolpath is not updating for you, go up here and make sure this object is selected. That object needs to be lit up in orange like that for all of the changes to dynamically update for all 2D toolpath. Once you're done, green check mark, and as you can see, the tool starts by plunging off the part, and it goes back and forth and extends through the material automatically until we're done machining.